uh, we don't have spring and fall, okay? We have rainfall and dry season. So the, the leaves don't really suffer that much. But when, you know, you, I, see, I said, wow, this is so beautiful. Wow, overseas, that's what we call it back home, overseas. The land of the white man is so beautiful. They have all kinds of leaves. They even have yellow leaves, red leaves, purple leaves, brown leaves. I didn't know that those are leaves that are dying. <laughs> you know, in the fall, the tree, the leaves are beginning to die, so they start changing color because they are dying. They're losing nutrients. But I thought they were so beautiful. What kind of tree are you? What kind of tree? Are you bringing forth the leaves that are yellow and dying, and you still think you're beautiful? I do yourself. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. <laughs> So I saw us, um, then Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. The Lord compares man to tree again. And he said, the man that trusts and hopes in the Lord is like a tree that bears fruit in season and out of season. Praise God. So it's in the Bible, blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Who is your hope? Are you hoping in your millions? Or are you hoping in the security of mommy or daddy's home? Are you hoping in your law degree, medical degree, accounting, nursing, or all kinds of degrees? Where is your hope? Are you so sure that life is good because you know for sure that you are made up, your money is set? Are you like the guy that the Bible called foolish in the Bible? He felt he was so rich. He gathered his goods in the barns and he saw that they're looking good. He spoke to his soul and said, look what we have done. He, 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 he gave himself, you know, we have an uncle that said, if nobody shakes me, I will shake myself with my left hand. So I've done well. So I see that this man that was called foolish, even shook himself and said, so you have done very well and patted himself on the back and said, you did good. Now relax. Build up and sit down all your life. And Jesus, the Lord said, you fool. Tonight, your life will be taken from you and we'll see where your wealth is. Hallelujah. Are you like the one that says, well, I need to walk seven days a week, 24 hours a day, because I need to sell up. So by the time I retire, I'm going to just relax. Hear what Jesus said. Hear what the Lord said to that soul. The Lord called that soul foolish, because you have removed your hope in God, and you're putting it in what you have or what you can do. Bible also said that we should not Oh my goodness, praise God. <laughs> Bible said that we should not put our trust in the son of man or our confidence in the arm of man, right? The arm of man may fail us. The arm of man is their strength, their muscle may fail us, but God will never fail. God said that if you ever put your trust in nothing else and, and, and you fail to put your trust in God, you're in trouble. Because if he has not, if he did not make the opposite, I want you to look at the opposite. I want us to read this together. It's, everybody can see it. So let's read. I'm not going to make you stand. Don't worry. So blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. Can we read together? Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreaded out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You understand? That means the man that put their trust in God will yield fruit in season and out of season. You will know nothing like old age. You'll be fruitful all your life. There will be good things coming your way. That's why he said in Isaiah 65 verse 22, as the days of the trees are, so are the days of my people. Amen? 
And his people are those that put their trust in him. His people are those that qualify according to Psalm 1, verse 3, verse 2 to 3. Amen? So you begin to say, what fruit am I? What fruit am I? Because if you follow after the Lord, he's hiding you and telling you that you're a tree that will not die young. Hallelujah. You will not die young. You will not die prematurely. You will not die without um, realizing your dreams, the dreams that you dream in the Lord. Amen. Amen. You will not die without being an excellent student, an excellent child of God. You will be known in the world. Look at, just go back in history. How did Abraham end up? How did Isaac Jacob end up? How did Moses end up? That's how you end up, in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor and say, that's how you will end up. Okay, do you have a neighbor? Everybody must speak a neighbor this morning. Say to your neighbor, look at your neighbor, I want eye contact. Yes, you could have two neighbors, children, that's fine. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, that's how you will turn out. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So now you see that in, in Old Testament, from the beginning of time, God talks about trees. And as we go into the New Testament, Matthew 3 verse 10, John the Baptist warned the people, in warning the people, still talked about the trees. You will see that every time they came, they call people trees. Okay? Comparison and referring to human beings as trees. What did he say? He says, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is here down and cast into the fire. I want you to look that for a few seconds because I'm going to ask our tech people to give me back the trees. Hallelujah. I don't want you to just think trees. Literally trees, but symbolically me and you. Hallelujah. John the Baptist said, the earth is led to the root. You know, one thing that got me there was that he didn't say to the trunk. You understand? He said to the root. Where do you find the root? Down there. If the root is destroyed, the plant cannot exist anymore. If you chop it off at the trunk, it could come back alive. It might take a few years, right? But it says to the root. So he's telling anyone who does not qualify, who does not fall into uh, Jeremiah 17, from verse 7 to 8, who does not fall into Psalm 3, from 1 to 3, this is what's going to happen. But wait, there is hope. Can I have the trees, please? Is it possible? Thank you so much. Praise God. I really want you to be in the mood of prayer this morning. I really want you to be so searching this morning and say, but Lord, what tree am I? If you know what tree you are and you are able to tell me that you are this tree, praise the Lord. Amen. Continue rejoicing. All I can say, well done, good and faithful reader. Well done, good and faithful reader. Well done, good and faithful get truth. Keep it going. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah? Are you searching your soul this morning? Are you looking into yourself this morning? Hallelujah! Now, if you tell me you're this tree, I'm going to say, Brett, my dear, we need to do something about it. Okay? And if you tell me you're this tree, oh my goodness, we also need to do something about it. Lord have mercy. Keep thinking. Keep looking at those trees. <laughs> I'm too small for this space. <laughs> I'm too small, so praise God. Hallelujah. I want us to just go to Matthew 7, 15 to 20. For each category of these trees are ex ex just explained in the Bible. Matthew 7. What am I saying here? When Jesus came on the scene, he also talked about trees. 
From Jesus' teaching, I could identify three major types of trees, the trees that we already have on the board. The tree that bears fruit, healthy, luscious, green, and fruitful. The tree that doesn't have fruit on it. I could say that we have another set of trees. There are some trees that look luscious. They are as green as the tree we have on this side, but there's no fruit on them. Never bearing fruit. Then there are the trees that are dying, and then there's this tree that has bad fruit. If you eat this fruit, you're in trouble. Amen. Now, I, I did these trees, and for each category, Jesus explained or revealed what happens or will happen to them. Anyone in the class of each of these trees will have something that's going to be happening. Amen? You are not just a tree planted for nothing. There is a, a destination. For each tree, there is a destination. We already heard it, uh, John the Baptist say that the, the, the axe is led to the root of the tree. They're watching every tree. Amen? The Lord is watching each of us. Any tree that does not bear fruit is going to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nandi, thank you so much. I love how you're doing this business with me. So please take me back to Matthew 7, 15 to 20. When you look at Matthew 7, 15 to 20, as you read them, you'll find two, two kinds of fruit identified. That's the fruit that bears, the tree that bears fruit, and the tree that bears the wrong fruit. It says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but in worldly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. You also identify the trees by what kind of fruits they bear, or if they are not bearing any fruit at all. You already identify. So you already identify yourself. If you are honest to yourself, you know what tree. You know what category of trees that you have fallen into. But I want you to know there is hope. Even if you fall into the worst of the trees, I'm telling you that Jesus gave hope and you have the right, and there is a chance for you as long as you accept what Jesus wants you to do. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said in verse 16, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? You don't go for that. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Can we say that? Can we read verse 17 together? And we're not, we're not going to read it fast. Read it so you get me. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Good tree bringeth forth good fruit. I just want you to register the pictures of the trees in your head, okay? There's the one on this side, the left, there's the one in the middle, and there's the one on the end. And so, the good tree you see bringing forth good fruit. The corrupt tree was the one on this end that's bringing forth evil fruit, messed up fruit. It's not that it's not bearing fruit, but what kind of fruit is it bearing? You are a Christian, we are believers. We are supposed to bear fruit, fruit of righteousness. Question is, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Amen? Ask yourself, because you're able to correct yourself. You're able to judge yourself unto correction. Amen? When you are convicted, you say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I realize I've been bearing bad, evil fruits. I want to change. Amen? Now, verse 18 says, A good tree cannot bring forth evil tree, evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And that is true. True, true. Hallelujah. The fruitful and unfruitful tree has very different uh, classifications. Now, when we come to the unfruitful tree, the unfruitful tree could be compared to the unbeliever. Amen? The unbeliever, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. 
and that's John 3, 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Don't, don't change this yet. Don't now whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not bring his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Whosoever believeth on him is saved, right? And whosoever does not believe is condemned already because he did not believe the Son of God. I'm paraphrasing, okay? But what is this saying? You are that tree that has no fruit that is dying because you have not believed on the Son of God. Amen. And if you look at Matthew 7, verse 19, every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. This is hellfire business here. Hellfire, and it's real. Heaven is real, and hell is real. It said, wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, the Lord reminds us that every fruit, every tree, that refuse Jesus as Lord and Savior, because that's the only criteria whereby you can be fruitful. Now there's another unfruitful kind of trees who have received Jesus Christ yet are not bearing the fruit of righteousness. Amen? So I'm going to ask us to go to Mark 11. Mark 11 from verse 12 to 14. You don't have any excuse as a believer not to bear fruit. Righteous fruit, by the way. You can't just say, well, I've received Jesus. You know, thank God, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm saved. I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, so now I can go to sleep. Wait.